Hey there, Barrys. This video is sponsored by Professor. Professor is a League of Legends application which is free. You can download that via the link in the description down below. It's an analytic program which will help you outside of game and inside the game itself. Inside the game, it keeps you track of your vision score and your level per minute and your gold compared to other people, your ELO. But outside the game, which we're looking at right now, it uh, tells you all of your stats and it has all your games here as well that you can have a look at. So for example, at the top here, I'm just going to click on my NAMI games. And here we can compare and find out where I'm weak at compared to other diamond players. So at the, the deaths, uh, we're doing okay on the deaths, could maybe improve slightly, but we're doing better than the average diamond Nami on this account. Uh, but on the roaming and kills and assists, maybe I could roam a bit more. You can see in the blue bar here, my roaming's not as good as maybe some other diamond Namis. But if I go over to vision score, I can see what I'm really excelling at, which is the vision. You can see how well I'm doing there in terms of keeping up vision, even better than, than the average master player in vision. So maybe I just need to keep up on roaming a little bit and maybe I'll keep climbing. I hope this uh, this little little tutorial for Professor helps you out. And the link is in the description down below and it's free. It's free, guys. Go for it. it should help. Hey there, Barrys. Welcome to the League of Legends patch 12.8 support tier list. If you're new to these type of videos, then, well, firstly, hi, I'm Bizzleberry. I hit Master twice on EU West on this season. Uh, so I should be able to give you some decent direction on what champions to be playing in solo queue in terms of your rank climb. Uh, my tier list is focused, as always, on a roundabout low plat minus. So if you're anywhere from unranked until around about plat two, this tier list should be pretty damn effective at giving you good advice of what to play. The reason why it is targeted towards that is that is because where the majority of you are, um, except for obviously the one or two challenges in the comment section down below. Um, the reason also is because in high ELO, um, you got a lot more one tricks that play off meta stuff as well. Um, also, um, the meta in high ELO or super high ELO uh, is generally a little bit different and generally a little bit more tank focused. But we'll focus all on that. Um, in a second uh, because first I want to talk about the actual changes coming into this patch it's quite a big patch overall um, but in terms of support changes there isn't a huge amount going on as usual um, but there are some significant changes to a couple of champions that you might be keen on playing so the first one in that long list of champions is Zareph. Zareph is getting a slight buff on his E stun so if you're if you don't know, it's that little single projectile that comes out. The uh, the distance travelled uh, on the E cast means a longer stun. So if you're right next to Zeraf, the stun is very, very short. If you're further away, it's longer. Uh, the buffing the entire stun duration by 0.25, which is actually quite a considerable amount. It means that the, the if they're super, super close to you, that, that stun is getting buffed tremendously percentage-wise. It's too early in the morning to work out the maths nerds in the chat or in the comments section down below. <laughs> Let me know the percentage difference there from 0.5 to 0.75. But as you can tell, it's, it's a huge difference in terms of duration if they're right next to your face. Um, so the Xerath, you know, AP Xerath support, I don't know if you guys like playing that. So that is looking a little bit more juicy for the bot lane. Um, a couple of things to mention as well, uh, there is a bard uh, passive change coming through and a heal change. You shouldn't... Okay, so spoilers for the tier list coming in, you shouldn't be playing bard in plat minus anyway, really. I would highly advise against it, just because he's going to be too difficult for the majority of you to play. Um, he's a very, very difficult champion to master. In high ELO, the, the, these bar changes do look a bit more interesting, um, particularly the W heal, the max heal going up from 215 to 240 is a decent chunk extra. Um, overall, will we see more bars being played? Maybe a tiny bit. Is this enough for him to be back into like solo queue meta? Maybe not. We'll have to wait and see. Um, I don't think these changes are these changes are welcome for Bard because his win rate was honestly really, really bad. Um, I don't think it will push him over 50%, but we'll see. Um, in terms of support nerfs, there's a huge one coming into Soraka, which we'll talk about in a second. 
Um, Pike is expected to be nerfed at some point, um, and uh, Seraphine is also looking to be buffed at some point, but not this patch. Uh, they've been like for a later date. Um, I think the pike changes, if you are concerned and, and, and are a pike player, I think it's aimed more towards mid. I've been banning pike a lot of my games lately, not because of support pike, but actually because of mid lane pike. And my mid lane is not able to deal with it, and then the pike then roams top or bot a lot. And that's been causing a lot of issues in my solo queue games. So I've been banning out pike just for mid lane pike. Um, so you might want to do the same in your own games if you're coming across that. But the Soraka nerf is, is actually pretty big. So reading it there, firstly, the uh, the text is wrong. Uh, the max heal should say 240 plus 70% AP is now going down to 210, and then it's losing 5% uh, AP ratio. So the heal is already going down by 30. But what you have to remember is is that Soraka's healing is added on a lot by multiplicative numbers. So you've got Revitalize, you've got the Forbidden Idol items like Redemption and stuff like that. So that heal, um, it may go down by 30 in base value and then an extra little bit on top of that in terms of AP ratio, but you're losing even more healing on top of that because you're losing the percentage as well. So we're talking about like a potentially 50, 60 heal loss on the W at max rank, which is quite a lot. Um, so it's quite a considerable nerf when you fact factor in the, the, the fact that items affect healing by quite a large percentage. From a personal standpoint, I can understand why the nerfing Straka, she's doing like a lot in terms of uh, win rate, um, she was probably number one, number two support to play in Soda Q. Uh, this is going to reduce her down a bit. Um, what I will say as a side note, Riot, you let these champions, like all the bruises and stuff like that, like have a bajillion healing. And the first champion you look at is Soraka. Thanks, Riot. <laughs> That's all I got to say about that. It's kind of, it's a bit iffy. I know they nerfed healing on some of the items last patch, but it's still nowhere near enough. Um, so a champion that's actually designed to heal champions gets nerfed, but the champions that aren't designed to heal, but get a ridiculous amount of healing through, through tank items on assassins and things like that is, that hasn't changed? No? Okay. But thanks. Sorry, a little, little rant there. Um, it just annoys me a lot. Um, yeah, the balancing on terms of support this this season has been my least favorite of any season, unfortunately. Anyway, whinging over. So good news in terms of solo queue playability. Um, the AP Kaiser in the mid lane is receiving a nerf. Uh, so that was actually one of my bans before Pike. Uh, AP Kaiser, you no longer have to worry about that. Hopefully in the mid lane, um, she'll be brought back to the bot lane. So you'll probably see more Kaisers in the bot lane. Um, Swain is receiving changes as well. It's too difficult right now to confirm if he's still going to be support viable or not. He wasn't doing too great in the support role anyway, pre-change. Uh, Swain's changes are more focused towards being able to be top lane. Um, so don't expect to play Swain coming into the patch and getting to do well as a support, at least anyway. Uh, but the changes do look quite exciting for top lane, but I'm not really going to cover it because I feel like he probably will be top lane meta. If if he ends up being support relevant, I'll talk about him more in the next patch. But but my gut instinct and stuff is, is telling me like, yeah, he, he's, he's going to be top lane. Uh, you probably won't see him bot lane anymore unless you've got like a couple of people testing it out. So I hope that's, that's the overview of the patch. Um, a couple of AD carry mentions as well. So you might start seeing Ezreal more in your games. Um, Ezreal's ulti got a dramatic buff uh, from two minute cooldown base down to 90 seconds at max rank, which I think again is insane. Um, but yeah, that's what it is. The Ezreal ulti is going to be ridiculously low on cooldown at uh, level six, 16 plus because he has a lot of cooldown reduction in his kit anyway. Um, so yeah, that's going to be pretty annoying to deal with, especially after we just removed kind of like the AP Kaiser. Now we're having to deal with kind of the same thing almost again. Maybe not as bad, but it's going to be a lot of Ezreal ults flying around uh, every game now. 
Uh, Tristana received a slight buff, so you might start seeing uh, that in your games. Uh, more aggressive, potentially, um, starts uh, coming out with having that Tristana buff, so just be aware of that. Uh, Jin W uh, received quite a big cooldown, so quite similar to the Xerath, it's another 0.25, uh, this time root duration on the W is getting increased, um, plus another bit of quality life there, but the, uh, the W uh, is going to be rooting you for longer, so that might catch you out again, so just be careful about playing against Jin's this patch. Uh, I don't believe there's anything else too much there. I guess we should probably mention the Velkoz. I, I don't recommend you play Velkoz support in your games. I know there's probably going to be like one person in, in the comment section. Oh, Brazil Barrel, you forgot about Velkoz. Um, he is getting buffed. Is it going to be dramatic enough for you to uh, carry as support? No, I don't think so. So he's going to be definitely improved for the mid lane. Um, AP ratios are generally better off for those solar laners because that's where they're getting the gold and they can afford to buy the AP items to then get off the AP ratios. Um, but generally, just I would generally avoid playing Velkoz. So let's go to the tier list. I think we've already talked about a lot of champions actually already. So in the tier list, so if we have a look, um, we have the tier 5, the usual suspects. I don't recommend you play any of those champions in your Sodoku games. Behind my head is a Nunu and a Rumble. Um, just don't avoid avoid playing these champions. Avoid playing the Misfortune and Ash as well, please. Don't bait yourself into it. It might seem fun, uh, but it won't be when you lose all of your games in Sodoku. Okay? Don't come crying to me if you lose all your LP. Uh, tier 4... Um, Seraphine's been seeing some action in the AP carry role rather than support. She's actually been doing okay in that role. Um, as as actual as an actual support, she's not been too doing too great. Um, and also you got like the Bard still there, even though he got buffed. And the Thresh, those champions are just too difficult generally for the um, the plat minus people to play. No offense, um, I would not recommend you playing those champions. Going up to tier 3, um, there's been a huge adjustment to my thoughts on Pike. I did put him tier 1 <clears throat> last patch and I think I kind of forgot once again about the mechanics and stuff and capabilities of people in plat minus. Once again, this isn't me trying to like make you feel bad or anything like that. This is just like the honest truth of the situation. Um, Pike is a very difficult champion to get the full amount of his kit out and you really do need to on that champion because it's such a snowbally champion. Think of him as like the equivalent of playing Draven. He's very difficult to play um, properly and um, a lot of you guys aren't playing him properly. Okay, yeah, I'm talking to you that you've been playing Pike. If you've been playing Pike in your games, but haven't been playing him properly. His win rate is actually really low right now in the support role. Um, so he's gone back down from tier 1 to tier 3. There are some better champions I want you to look at in terms of engage. But we'll, uh, we'll go to that in a second. Uh, Lulu I've also reduced from tier 2 to tier 3. Her win rate is even going lower and lower now. Um, I think there's been a lot of people doing Moonstone Lulu even with the Moonstone being nerfed. Um, I would advise generally if you're going to go Lulu do Shirelias because you should be taking it with someone who needs the movement speed and the maneuver like a Twitch or a Cockmaw um, or a Vayne. But generally, you're relying on your AD carry a little bit too much in order for it to work. So that is why Lulu is tier 3. Uh, I've moved Leona down a, l uh, a lot now. Um, she's generally still the tankiest tank. Um, but there's just, uh, just some better engaged champions for you to play. If you really want to play those, um, you probably have already worked them out. But um, anything that basically any hook champion essentially is better apart from Thresh, just because he's a bit too difficult for the general ELO to play. Um, one champion I actually had to do some research on, just to make sure, uh, is around about tier 3, is Karma. One would think that Karma's uh, AP damage in lane would be good enough, particularly in the low ELOs, in order to dominate the game. Um, unfortunately, that is not the case. Uh, the only thing I can think of is that people aren't necessarily managing their mantras properly. Uh, so knowing when to switch to like a W mantra or an E mantra, particularly the W mantra actually. I think it, in people in uh, Iron to Gold in particular don't utilize mantra W as much as they should do. Um, 
at her win rate is not doing amazingly. She's not a ter terrible champion to play at any means, but she uh, isn't doing too hot either right now. Um, but, you know, solid tier 3 champion right there. Moving up to tier 2, unfortunately, we have seen now Soraka dip down into tier 2. Um, I, th I think she's still a very strong champion. I think she's strong in tier 2. I think it's a little bit more situational now whether you want the silence in your in your team or not. Silence is super underrated and there are lawless channels and things like that that you can use to interrupt. Stuff like Nunu Snowball coming into lane, I would still pick Soraka and things like that. Maybe a cat as well. Cat's really easy and some of the assassins as well do get punished quite heavily with silence because it means they go in but they're silent so they can't do half of their kit plus it's really difficult for them to escape. So Soraka is still decent in a lot of situations, don't get me wrong. She's probably the strongest champion there in tier 2, um, but she's not tier 1 material anymore. Which I think is quite significant in this tier list since she has been tier 1 for quite some time. Brand, I moved up from tier 3 to tier 2. He's doing really well. Um, he is the second best mage to play uh, in solo queue right now. So don't feel too bad if you're playing him. Senna win rates are doing quite well in the lower ELOs as well. I think she's struggling a little bit at the high ELOs though. But that's generally the case of all damage supports like Senna, Brand, the tier 1 mage support that I nearly spoiled for you, um, are generally falling off a little bit at high ELO. But if generally plat minus, you're absolutely fine to play this champion still. It's the same with Lux as well. Janna, even though I don't play her much, she is doing well against those hard engaged champions. If you are running a poke composition and you just want to delay the, the team fights as long as possible, she's pretty good against engage. She's decent against assassins if you're quick enough with her ultimate. So yeah, and uh, Nautilus, um, the second best engaged support in the game. And Renata's definitely seeing particularly high win rates at the moment. I don't know if that is purely because uh, people aren't experienced against her enough, so maybe get caught out by the revive and maybe even the Q a little bit um but her win rate is doing okay at the moment so she's still uh she's not super high in tier two um i think she is vulnerable from to moving down to tier three at some point um but i think she is she does she deserves to be in tier two just about just about tier one i think this is like one of the smallest tier ones that i've ever done um, but those are your champions for tier 1, Nami, Sona, Blitzcrank, and Zyra. Um, they all have pretty high win rates this patch, um, and Sona is probably the strongest champion now that you can play uh, in solo queue if I was to choose one. Um, get generally, you know, games last longer as well in lower ELOs, which means Sona gets to excel a lot more than a lot of the other champions. So... Sona is queen uh, for this patch. Um, Blitzcrank and, well, Zyra in particular isn't too far behind, nor is the Nami. Uh, Blitzcrank doesn't have as high win rates as the other champions, but he is still um, the best tank engage that you can play. And if you were to ban anything, if you were plat minus, I would probably stick with burning Blitzcrank. I think that's still a good move. I know a lot of you do, and that's absolutely fine to do. And then you, you just play Sona, really, honestly. If you like, if you want my honest opinion, if you just want to climb, uh, ban Blitzcrank, play Sona, gain LP, hit gold, retire, see you next year. <laughs> um, but that, that that's what I would do if I had limited playtime and stuff like that. I know Sona's not exactly the most entertaining champion for a lot of people to play um but that is one way you could cheese out some extra lp for sure this particular patch at least anyway and that would be with a moonstone build still even with the nerfs i still like moonstone a lot but i won't judge you if you do sure it is i hope the tier list helps you out um i hope it gives, makes it a bit clearer on terms of what is the meta at the moment in the plat minus elo once again, some of these champions, if you are high ELO, then plat, if you are diamond plus, um, a lot of this might not necessarily be relevant to you. General, the general is, is if you are high ELO, like diamond plus, take a tier off the, uh, the APs and the damage dealers like Senna, Brand, Zyra, move them down one tier if you are high ELO, and then move the tanks up potentially one tier. So in that case, Blitzcrank is actually... He, even though he's like a 
quote unquote like noob stomper he's actually really really good in high elo as well especially there's a lot more shields coming through um we're starting to see more seraphine ap carries like i was mentioning luxes um are still being brought up and there's still a lot of shields in the game and blitzcrank is super underrated how much extra damage he does in the fights with his ulti just getting rid of shields He's, he's actually doing like 1,000 damage in some fights just by removing shields. It's kind of insane. So it's it's super underrated for sure just because you don't see the fat number that comes with the the shield removal on his ult. But anyway, I hope the, the tier this helps you out. Subscribe if you want to see more support content. I do daily videos and uh, I'll be streaming the patch tomorrow, Wednesday, Wednesday the 27th. So I'll see you then. Bye, guys.